Hello everyone, it's Carrie, and in today's video I'm working on an Apple White Ever After High doll and making her into a Rococo version of Alice in Wonderland. This was a commission from a super sweet longtime supporter and Patreon friend. I'll be sharing the costume making as well as the face up. So I'm getting started on the costume. I'm working with some vinyl and making a corset. This is oftentimes the first step in my process if it uh, is if I'm working on a doll that doesn't have like an end game, so or a, a defined end game rather. So this one, um, this super sweet customer asked me to just make a, a Marie Antoinette looking Alice in Wonderland. So I didn't have um, just an exact idea in mind. So oftentimes when that's the case, I'll just get started on the corset, and that usually gives me a base of to to get my mind going with ideas because I'll just start to add some trims and laces and go from there. And so this time I pulled out my uh, lace and just went through it to find the kind that I wanted to use to make a little apron. And I felt like this kind was just perfect. This is just a sort of a fabric trim design. And I made this little apron, added some ribbon around the waist, and then some straps over the shoulder, and then added a little bit of a collar to match the corset. From there, I just started adding different layers of different types of trim. And here I'm using this same uh, fabric to make some little short pants for underneath. Sometimes I use patterns for pants and other times I don't. I kind of just have done it enough that I, if in certain cases, if it doesn't have to be precisely fitted, I kind of just wing it and uh, kind of have my pattern memorized in my head. <laughs> so that's what I did with these short pants and then just gave it a hem at the top. And luckily because of the type of fabric this was as a trim, I didn't have to hem the bottom. It just had that cute little scallop at the end. So I stitched each leg together and gave her her little pants. I usually try on each piece as I move along on the body and I added some snaps to the back and some um, and I tied the corset in the back as well. There's a snap on the back of the corset too. So I'm just ironing out some of the pieces to make some little arm uh, or little sleeves and gathered them around the ends. And now I'm just laying out some bits and pieces to determine how I want to make the little bustles on the side of her hips. Definitely wanted to incorporate some black and white stripe because that's kind of the aesthetic of Alice in Wonderland that I was trying to capture. So I had these little pieces left over from another project and so I cut those down and added those to the bustle as well as the original trim that I was using and a couple of other pieces of lace and trim. Then for underneath the bustles I just gathered up some of this tool and stitched it on. And there's the finished outfit. I also gave her some tights and shoes, of course, but this is the look. Moving on to the face up, I gave her several coats of Mr. Super Clear and then start with the eyes as usual. I'm 
Just a reminder, if you're interested in more close-up, step-by-step learning, check out my classes on Skillshare. I have a couple of beginner classes that are formatted in short, easy to follow lessons with lots of tips and supply information. So if you sign up through the link in the description below, you'll get the free two weeks with no obligation, cancel any time. You also may want to check out what I have available on Patreon. I have a library full of close-up tutorial videos on just about all parts of the process, including things like making fairy wings, drawing the eyes, drawing the waterline, shading the face, <clears throat> excuse me, shading the face and more. So link, the link to my Patreon and Skillshare are both in the description box below. So even though the apple white face is a, is a pale color, I wanted to add a little bit more white to just make it super pale. And to do that, I was using pan pastels. I use uh, pan pastels mainly as my pastel. Uh, I, they have good, they're very soft and highly pigmented. So if you're having some trouble with your pan pastels, making them um, show as much color as you'd like, it may be that you need to kind of upgrade to a better brand like Schmincke or Rembrandt. Uh, those are softer and have are more heavily pigmented and have less fillers. So you may want to consider that. Pan Pastel is my favorite. I've used all of them and it's just easy to pick up from a pan and I really enjoy it. It's not sponsored or anything, but I just recommend that. So all of the supplies that I use are on my Amazon storefront, along with some detail on how I use them. I also get a small commission from any purchases made from my storefront, but either way, I thought it was a great way to list my supplies out for those who asked. I often get asked what supplies I use, so the link to that is in my description box below as well. If you've been following me for a while, you know I often like to do the lips in some details using a uh, small round brush that I've cut down. So sometimes when my brushes get pretty ratty, I like to cut them down to make sort of a stencil brush and it works really well. Um, I've given this tip for several years and I know uh, a lot of my friends who work on dolls have started using that as well. It works pretty well to really get the color on there. Refining the shape with a Derwent watercolor pencil. By the way, if you're a supporter over on Patreon, a close-up demonstration of how I did the smoky eyes on this is available in the reward library. I believe that was the April uh, close-up clip of the month but uh, you can check that out in the reward library um, at any time. So at this point, I've added several coats of MSC uh, in between the process. So just before, uh, I'm just kind of adding more color and more layers of color to darken up that black around the eye, adding a crease in the eyelid and the corners of the mouth. adding some more white because I want to maintain that really pale face. So with just about every layer of MSC, and what I mean by layers is uh, once I'm happy with the first layer of color, like on the eyes, I'll, I'll start the eyes and the lips and a little bit of highlight. I'll go and add a few coats of Mr. Super Clear and then I'll do another layer of color just to build up the, the vibrancy. So 
wanted to be real particular about where I put the cheek color, so the blush. I wanted it directly under the eye. Oftentimes I'll, add, I'll bring that blush up in the, across the cheekbone uh, into the temples. Uh, but in this case, I wanted to have that sort of Marie Antoinette blush where it's just kind of a round blush in the cheek, the apple of the cheek. Onto the eyebrows, I'm using my short round brush that I cut to shape the base, basic color and shape of the eyebrow. Blending that out as best I can. And then I'm using like a light brown color or actually it's just a regular brown. Uh, I wanna say burnt sienna, but I'm not sure if that's right. Um, from the Pan Pastel set. And then I shape it with an eraser to try to make sure that they're even, as even as possible. And then I add some individual hairs with a Faber-Castell Art Grip pencil, uh, watercolor pencil. Super sharp point. And I'm using some uh, sandpaper there to kind of, kind of sharpen the tip. working the shape of those eyebrows and give them a highlight underneath. And then adding the bottom lashes. After that, I'll use some gouache to add the highlights in the eyes, little dot highlights. And just a heads up, um, you'll wanna do this anytime, uh, but I've noticed in beginners, this is one of the tips that is really necessary. At the end, once you're done with your face up, before you add the gloss to the eyes or anything, you wanna give that several coats of Mr. Super Clear. I mean, just go overboard. Um, don't, uh, you know, don't put so much on that it drips, but you'll wanna put like pretty heavy coat of it, um, more so than you would in between or even at the beginning. Um, make sure those eyes are well coated. Give it several, like as many coats as you like eight coats if you can um, because you want to once you put that gloss on you can activate any of the colors that you've added underneath that including the white that I'm adding here the gouache it's all water soluble so uh, the pencil and the gouache so you want to make sure that it, if you the Mr. Super Clear will seal that so that when you put that liquid gloss on, it doesn't cause everything to run together. So you could really ruin those eyes and, and the work that you've done um, if you don't have that well sealed. I hope that made sense. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. If you did like this video, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Extra special thanks to all my patrons for your support and making these videos possible. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye.